Here to discuss is CrowdStrike CEO George Kurtz. George, welcome. What do you make of this warning from the FBI director wreaking havoc on U.S. infrastructure? Well, I think what we're seeing is the serious nature of this, uh, to have the FBI come out and actually warn against this particular threat, uh, I think um, shows the level of capability that China has. And I think the level of concern the U.S. government actually has uh, in this pre-preparation phase uh, before a potential invasion of Taiwan. And that's really what this is all about. And that's the level of concern that we're seeing here. So when we think U.S. critical infrastructure, we think what, water, gas, electric, how vulnerable are we? Well, this is one of the things that um, we've seen over many years is that critical infrastructure, certainly in the U.S., most of it is not owned by the U.S. government. And it has and continues to be one of the areas of concern and vulnerability. When you look at the level of security in some of the organizations, um, there's certain standards that they're trying to adhere to, but many of these systems, these operational technologies, OT, are old, antiquated, and very difficult to upgrade. So they become even more vulnerable to attack and disruption by the likes of what we call Vanguard Panda, the Chinese government. So who do you think this message was for from the FBI director? And who needs to heed it? In general, what I would say is critical infrastructure needs to heed this, but cybersecurity is more than just critical infrastructure. And I think this warning is a public warning, um, given what we're seeing in this operational preparation of the environment, OPE. This is really the pre-positioning phase before something happens. And as we know, China has been very patient, but they have made it clear that Taiwan is of interest to them. So I think what we're seeing here is the U.S. government saying, hey, we've got a problem here critical infrastructure and the private sector need to come together to be able to identify and disrupt the Chinese government from taking these pre-positioned activities before something happens in the future. Do you have a view, George? I mean, we talk about the different silos of risk regarding water treatment and the grid and natural gas and oil production. Do you, do you think that there's any asymmetry within that? Is one mo more at risk than the other? Well, you have to step back and you have to look at really what is the intention here, and it's to disrupt the logistics. So if Taiwan, if the U.S. was to be drawn into a, a war with Taiwan, we've spent billions and billions of dollars to have the capabilities to be able to engage. If those capabilities disrupted from a logistical perspective, the oil, the gas, the ammunition, if it can't get to where it needs to be, everything today is run on the network. And if we don't have those capabilities, what better way to disrupt without actually even sending a, a missile somewhere, right? If you engage in a kinetic-type uh, warfare, obviously you know who it is, and that increases the escalation between the two countries. But if you can hide behind an anonymous, anonymous botnet like the KV botnet, which was actually disrupted, it, there's some level of, of, of shielding that takes place where it's good, not, not really going to engage the U.S. To, to be drawn into something because of the anonymity. Is it right. really China? Is it not? It's hard to prove. But from a cyber perspective, we know they've been involved in these sort of activities. It's almost it's, it's like a, a proxy of a proxy war, uh, which obviously makes the response uh, a lot more difficult to, to figure out. Absolutely. And that's why cyber has been such an effective tool, not only for network reconnaissance, for data theft. We've talked about on your show many times the Chinese and stealing this data, but the ability to actually disrupt and de degrade capabilities, um, it's the perfect cyber weapon uh, to be able to do that.